Hello, in this lecture we'll be studying properties of linear functions. If you're taking a pre-calculus course, this should be mostly review. So we're going to go over equations of linear functions, both in slope, intercept, and general form. We'll study graphs of linear functions, including a study of what the slope of a line is, how to find it, and what it tells us about a line. We'll also work with linear inequalities and model situations using linear functions. Now a linear function is a function whose graph is a straight line. One possible form for a linear function is y equals mx plus b. And what's important here is that you have y all by itself on one side, and on the other side of the equal sign, something times x plus a fixed number. This could also be f of x equals mx plus b instead of y if you're using function notation. If you are in this form, f of x equals mx plus b, we say that the line is in slope intercept form. m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So again, it's important that you have y or f of x by itself equals slope times x plus y-intercept. You can also write a line in the form ax plus by equals c, which is called the general or standard form. And what's different here is that on one side of the equal sign, you have a number times x plus a number times y. And if this number b is negative, this could be a minus sign. But you have something times x and something times y equals a fixed number. So both of your variables, x and y, are on one side here, and then you just have a number on the other side. This is general or standard form of a line. By doing a little bit of arithmetic and algebra, you can go back and forth between the two forms. There's not really a difference between them. We can move from one to the other as we wish. So let's do an example of that. First, let's take the standard form, 3x minus 4y equals 6, and convert it to slope-intercept form. So in this first one, notice we have a number times x, a number times y. This is a negative number, but that's fine. You can interpret this as 3x plus negative 4y. And on the other side of the equal sign, we just have a fixed number, 6. So all the variables here and all of the constant terms here. We want to convert that to slope-intercept. Conversely, in the second example, we're going to take this slope-intercept form, where you have y by itself, equals number times x plus a number, and we're going to convert it to general form. Okay, so for the first one, let's take 3x minus 4y equals 6. To put it into slope-intercept form, what's important is to have the y all by itself on one side. So here's what we start with, 3x minus 4y equals 6. We're going to subtract 3x from both sides and divide everything by negative 4 to get the y by itself. After a little simplification, we have y equals 3 fourths x minus 3 halves. So we have y equals mx plus b, m being 3 fourths and b being negative 3 halves. For the second example, we have the slope-intercept form, y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 fourths. Now what we need to do is put all of the x's and y's on one side and all of the constants on the other. So starting from what we had, y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 fourths, if we add 1 half x to both sides, we're actually done. We have a number times x plus a number times y, 1 half x plus 1 y, and on the other side of the equal sign, the constant 3 fourths. Let's do another example. Let's graph f of x equals 2x minus 3 by plotting some points. If x is equal to 0, we find the y-intercept. f of 0 is 2 times 0 minus 3, which is minus 3. So the point x equals 0, y equals minus 3 is on the line. There's our y-intercept. When x is equal to 1, we get f of 1 is 2 times 1 minus 3, which is negative 1. So the point 1 comma negative 1 is on the line. And we can do a third point just to be safe when x is 2 f of 2 is equal to 1, so 2 comma 1 is on the line. Now when you're graphing a line, two points should be all that's necessary, but a third point is good practice just to make sure you didn't make a mistake. So let's plot all of those points. First we have 0 comma minus 3, then we'll plot 1 comma minus 1, and at this point we could draw a straight line connecting them, but let's put the third point down as well, 2, 1, and now it shouldn't matter which two we pick, if we connect the dots, we should get the same straight line going through all three points. Again, two points are all that's necessary, but assuming you've got, you know, 15 extra seconds doing your homework or an exam, a third point is a good way to check that you haven't made any errors. All three points should be what's called collinear on the same line. And there's our equation, f of x equals 2x minus 3. Now the y-intercept is minus 3. We found that already when x is equal to 0, 
y equals minus 3. We could have read that off straight away at the beginning. The slope of this line is 2, f of x is 2x minus 3. So what the slope means is that if I go to the right one unit, we have to go up by the slope, which is 2. So look at this line. If I move to the right one unit, I go up 2. If I move to the right one unit, I go up 2. Right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2. So that's the slope of the line. There's a couple of ways we can talk about the slope of a line. As a fraction, we often say that slope is rise over run, or the change in the y-coordinate over the change in the x-coordinate. And in math, to represent the change of something, we frequently use this Greek letter delta, this triangle. So delta y over delta x. Now, if you know two points that the line goes through, we have this formula here. The slope is given by y2 minus y1, the second y-coordinate minus the first y-coordinate over x2 minus x1, the second x-coordinate minus the first x-coordinate. Now, it doesn't actually matter between the two points which one you call first and which one you call second as long as you're consistent. So if you have a point x1, y1 and x2, y2, you could do y1 minus y2 as long as in the denominator you did x1 minus x2. That's just switching which one you're considering to be first and second. So for example, in the previous example, we had several points that the line went through. If we pick any two of these points, we can compute the difference or change or delta of the y coordinates over the difference change or delta of the x coordinates, and we'll get two. Okay, so for example, if we pick this point, zero minus three, and this point, one minus one, then we can take the difference of the y coordinates over the difference of the x coordinates, negative 1 minus negative 3, that's y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1, 1 minus 0, which works out to be 2 over 1, which is 2, which we already knew was the slope of that line. If we pick the points 2, 1, and 0 minus 3, in contrast, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 will be negative 3 minus 1 over 0 minus 2, which is negative 4 over negative 2, the negative signs cancel out, and 4 over 2 is 2. So again, we got the same slope of 2. Now the slope of a line tells us something about that line. For example, if the slope is a positive number, then the line is increasing from left to right. It is moving up. Conversely, if the slope is a negative number, the line is decreasing. It is moving down from left to right. If the slope is exactly 0, then the line is exactly horizontal. However, if the line is a vertical line, there is no slope. The slope is not defined. There are several different methods to find the slope of a given line, and the choice of how you're going to find the slope of a given line will depend on what information you have. So let's take a look at a few different lines and see how we might differently find the slope. First, what if we have the equation f of x equals negative 4 fifths x plus 2? Second, 6x plus 3y equals negative 9. Third, the line containing the points 1, negative 2, and 0, 3. And lastly, what if we simply are given the graph of a line and we wish to find its slope? So first, we had f of x equals negative 4 fifths x plus 2. This is already in slope-intercept form. We have f of x or y equals number times x plus number. And the coefficient of x is the slope, negative 4 fifths. Slope-intercept form directly gives you the slope straight away. The slope of this line is negative 4 fifths. Next, what if we have the line with equation 6x plus 3y equals negative 9? Now, this is not in slope-intercept form. We do not have y equals number times x plus number. This is in general form. So, to find the slope, we need to do a little bit of algebra to convert it to slope-intercept form. We need to solve it for y. So, the first thing we could do is subtract 6x from both sides and divide everything by 3. Now we have slope-intercept form. y equals number times x plus number. And the number multiplying x, the coefficient of x, is the slope, negative 2. In the third one, we were simply given two points in the line, 1, negative 2, and 0, 3. So here we're going to use that formula for slope, y2 minus y1, so 3 minus negative 2, over x2, 0, minus x1, 1. And if you simplify this down, you get 5 over negative 1 or negative 5. The slope of this line is negative 5. Lastly, we were given a graph. Now to find the slope of a line from its graph, 
what we need to do is find two points on the graph and then do what we did in the previous example. So looking at this graph, it is reasonable to think it goes through this point and this point exactly. This is 0, 4. The x-coordinate is 0. The y-coordinate is 4. So the point is 0, 4. And this point here is 2, 0. Now it looks like it goes through 1, 2 as well, or 3, negative 2. There are lots of points we could pick, but try to find things that have nice whole numbers. It will make your work a little easier. For example, I wouldn't pick this point right here and make some sort of guess as to what the coordinates are. But 0, 4, 2, 0, those look pretty good. So using those two points, we're going to take the difference of the y coordinates, 0, minus 4, over the difference of the x coordinates, 2, minus 0 which works out to just be negative 2. This line has slope negative 2. We can also solve linear inequalities. For example, we have 3 minus 2x being less than or equal to 15. This is a linear inequality. Or 4 is less than or equal to 6x minus 1 is less than 10, referred to as a compound inequality because it really refers to two separate inequalities at once. First, 4 is less than or equal to 6x minus 1. And also, 6x minus 1 is less than 10. Now these inequalities can be solved algebraically or graphically. And the steps to solve them algebraically are very similar to the steps you would use to solve a linear equation. Usually, the solution to an inequality will be an interval. So now let's go ahead and solve those inequalities. First, we're going to take a look at 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 15. Now to solve this inequality, we're going to solve it for x. And you would do this the same way you would solve an equation for x. However, this is important to remember for inequalities. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must reverse the direction of the inequality. That doesn't apply to adding or subtracting negative numbers, only multiplying or dividing by them. So we start with 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 15. To solve for x, the first step we do is subtract 3 from both sides. We don't need to worry about flipping an inequality. Adding or subtracting, you never do. However, next we're going to divide by negative 2. And when you divide by negative 2, you must change the direction of the inequality. So we have solved 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 15 as being x is bigger than or equal to negative 6. As an interval, this would be from negative 6 to infinity. Since we are allowing x to equal negative 6, we use a square bracket here. It's then everything bigger, so it goes all the way up to infinity, and we never include infinity because it is not a number, so we use the open parenthesis there. Now let's take a look at that second compound inequality. Here we have 4 is less than or equal to 6x minus 1 is less than 10. Now with a compound inequality where the only place x appears is in the middle, the goal is to get x by itself in the middle. Now, as in the first example, we're going to do basic algebra to solve this for x. Now, what's important is do the same thing to all three pieces. Really, what you're doing is you're simultaneously solving this inequality and this one. And if you were solving this inequality for x, you would do the same thing to both sides, like add one to both sides. And if you were solving this inequality for x, you would also add one to both sides. So do them both simultaneously by adding one to all three pieces. So if you only have x's in the middle, this will work out. Just make sure to do the same thing to all three bits of your compound inequality. So we started with 4 is less than or equal to 6x minus 1 is less than 10. By adding 1 to all parts, we now have 5 is less than or equal to 6x is less than 11. Dividing by 6, since it's a positive number, we don't need to flip anything. 5 sixths less than or equal to x less than 11 sixths. And there's our solution. And as an interval, it goes from 5 over 6 to 11 over 6. And observe, we are allowed to equal 5 sixths, square bracket, not allowed to equal 11 sixths, open parenthesis. Now let's use the graph of a line, which is given here, to solve a couple of inequalities. Where is f of x less than 2, and where is f of x bigger than or equal to minus 1? So let's take a look at that first one, f of x less than 2. So f of x is y. So we want to look at where is y less than 2. Okay, now here's a point on the line where y is equal to 2. 3 comma 2. Just by looking at the graph and assuming it's, you know, plotted accurately, we pick out that point 3 comma 2. We're looking for where is the y coordinate equal to 2. We're now looking for y coordinates less than 2. So we focus on the part of the graph that is below this blue point that we've just put down. 
So let's color that part of the line to also be blue. This is all of the line that is below the point we found where y is equal to 2. Now the solution to the inequality is where are the x's corresponding to these blue bits? And we see it's all of the x coordinates to the left of the one we found 3. So where is the line strictly below y equals 2 as long as x is strictly to the left of 3? x is less than 3. As an interval, this would be all the way up to 3, but not including it. So we never include infinities, and then we are not including 3 here as well. Because this inequality here did not allow for equality, we are not including this x coordinate because there y would equal 2, and we want y to be less than 2. Okay, next up, where is f of x bigger than or equal to minus 1? We do the same thing. What is a point on the line where the y coordinate is minus 1? Well, here is y equals minus 1, which hits the line here. That is an x coordinate of minus 3. Again, assuming everything is labeled correctly. So because we're now looking for y is bigger than or equal to minus 1, we look at where on the graph is above y equals minus 1. So if we color that part of the line blue, where is the line above the point we just found? It's all of this. And then the solution is what are the x coordinates to all of these points? Well, it starts at x equals minus 3 and goes to the right. And in this case, we are including x equals minus 3 because our original inequality allowed for an equals here. So this point is valid. So we're looking for all of the x's bigger than or equal to minus 3. Now, if we were interested in presenting this as an interval, we would go ahead and say we want to include minus 3 and then go to the right, but we never include infinity. Okay, now let's take a look at a modeling problem. A new car was purchased in 2015 for $34,000. Each year, the value of the car decreases by $3,500. Let f of t be a linear function that represents the value of the car t years after 2015. Find an equation for f of t. Then let's find the value of the car in 2023. And then the value of a different car is given by g of t equals negative 1,200 times t plus 25,500, where again, t is the number of years since 2015. At what point in time, if ever, will the two cars be of equal value? Okay, so let's take a look at the first part first. f of t is a linear function. So we're going to go ahead and model it in a slope intercept form. f of t is m times t plus b. We just need to find the slope m and the intercept b. Now, the b is the intercept. When the variable is 0, when t is equal to 0, what's the value of the car? Well, since t represents years after 2015, if t is 0, we're actually in the year 2015, and in 2015, the car is worth $34,000. So when t is 0, b should be 34,000. The slope represents the change in the value of the car every year. We are given that every year the value decreases by 3,500. So we want the change in value to be negative $3,500 per year. So m is negative 3,500. This tells us that f of t is negative 3,500t plus 34,000. Part b, find the value of the car in 2023. Well, that's eight years after 2015, just by doing 2023 minus 2015 is eight. So to find the value of the car in 2023, we simply need to plug eight into the function we found in part a. So negative 3,500 times 8 plus 34,000, that works out to be exactly $6,000. So having spent $34,000 on a car in 2015, eight years later, it is only worth $6,000. Let's go ahead and look at part C. Now we already found an equation for f of t in part A. We are given the equation g of t in part C. If the cars have equal value, since f of t is the value of the first car and g of t is the value of the second car, we want their values to be equal, we want f of t to equal g of t. So f of t equals g of t is what we are now going to solve. f of t in part a we found to be negative 3500t plus 34,000. g of t was given as negative 1200t plus 25,500. And look at the wording of part c. At what point in time will the cars be the same value? So what we're trying to answer is a point in time. That is a t. So we need to solve this for t. 
So we're going to move all of the t's over to one side. So if we add 1,200t to this side, it cancels out. If we add 1,200t to this side, we get negative 2,300t. Then we're going to subtract 34,000 from this side and subtract it from this side. So we have negative 2,300t equals negative 8,500. Divide both sides by negative 2,300, and we get about 3.7. So the value of the cars will be the same about 3.7 years after 2015. That's about three and a half years later. So that's, you know, summer of 2018, more or less.